Two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Welcome to What's on Tap Podcast, day 18. Yeah, welcome. Um, we have a beer that I brought. Yes. By this time, the, the beers are getting fewer and the wrapping paper is getting more obvious. I, I know what this beer is. And it's both with fear and great anticipation that I'm waiting for just, Stefan to open it. It's just like some sort of like 22% ice wine or something like that. <laughs> no, it's kind of a blast from the past for oh. you and me. Oh, you know, this is a beer I've always wanted to try. You've um, had it. You and I have had this have beer we? together wow. one and a half years ago. This is Omnipollo and Buxton's Anniversary Coward. All right. So this is what is out to replace the, um, uh, the yeah, the bottle that was like a Ku Klux Klan. Right, right, right. What was that called? I cannot remember. Uh, because they put out uh, the cease and desist. Uh, Yellow edition. Belly. Yellow Belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yellow Belly, um, which was a, which was a, which is weird because it was such a interesting um packaging. packaging yeah so the outside was a paper wrapper that went over the bottle and then twisted at the top and there were two eyes so it yes. looked kind of ominous and then when you took the um the paper off then you had the messaging about it being an anti-racism beer and how yes. much you're doing to fight racism um but then what happened was there was um I think a British brewery made a Jello Belly beer that was about birds, and they it was some kind of copyright infringement battle. Uh, possibly, but they also um, at the same time it kind of all happened at the exact same time. They got the cease and desist, and then they had um, it was a couple of places in the U.S. got a hold of the bottle. And then it kind of, it kind of came a thing like, oh my God, why is this brewery putting out a Ku Klux Klan beer? Yeah, <laughs> and it's like, it's actually like the opposite of that. It's to raise it's, awareness of racism and you know, and that what this brewery is doing to combat it. But so they I remade the, it into the, the anniversary coward, yeah. which is now a hand crushing a, a swastika. Yeah, it's a hand put, punching into a swastika, breaking it up. This one is from two thousand eighteen, mm -hmm. and it's thirteen percent ABV, and you and I have had it. Yes. If you don't remember it, I won't say what you gave it. I'll be very curious to, to know what I gave it because... You, I will only reveal it after you give a rating for this one. Let's hope right. this one hasn't gone downhill uh, in the can. Yeah. Uh, so it's peanut butter or something, right? It's uh, peanut butter and cracker and biscuits. Bis yeah. So it cookies. definitely yeah. smells like peanut butter. Um, so I've been, I've been looking forward so much to having this can with you because we've talked about... This has been sitting in your fridge for like two years or something, right? Yeah, for a long Basically. time. Basically, yeah. But I remember seeing it in there every time thinking, oh, we should... Yes. We should have that. Because that's that's the reference. You've seen it at my place mm -hmm. and gone, ooh, I want to drink that. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, at the right time. Yep. Uh, because it, it never gets taken out of our tastings because our friends have had it. Yada, yeah, yada, yeah, yeah. yada. There's a lot of that peanut, peanut butter, butter powder. Yeah, thing. which is not one of my favorite uh, things. I remember because I had uh, Yellow Belly Sunday, and that might have been the first beer I ever gave a, a five out of five to. Wow. Which is, I think it's basically the the Yellow Belly, but barrel Barrage, aged. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's an amazing beer. And it's a purple label with a mirror that's cracked. Yes. Um, and since then, I've had it many times. Uh, it used to be like once a year, I would. I would, I would Track down a bottle and then buy it, no matter what the cost, because I just loved it so much. It's just been discontinued, I believe, and or at least it hasn't come out in the past uh, year or so. Um, so yeah, let's let's, let's try this. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, see, it's got kind of that. Um, what do you call it? Uh, almond pasty. Um, it, almond pasty, yeah, definitely. It's marzipan. That's the word I'm looking for. It is quite marzipan. -y. <laughs> it is a little bit artificial, but it is actually it's really tasty. 
<laughs> the look on your face when you say really tasty is different from the words that are coming out of your mouth. <laughs> Do I look like I'm not enjoying it? Yes, because because the look on your face was like, here, I'm, I'm going to be like, it's really tasty. No, but I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's, like, it's like if you could smile, frown, that was a look on your face. <laughs> I had built up in my brain that mm-hmm. this was not going to be good. Mm. I was I had built up in my brain, oh this is getting too old. It is Omnipoyo doing uh, artificial aromas uh, pastry. Yeah. But but I I'm I'm uh, I'm actually talking myself down from the ledge, so to speak. Yeah. It is good. It is very tasty and it is the Yellow Belly, you know, reborn in a new packaging. Um, it's a, um, it's good. I found that when I tried Yellow Belly Sunday, I thought, oh my god, this is amazing. Apparently, I really like peanut butter beers. It turns out that was not the case. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one peanut butter beer because then I tried the Belgian Beaver peanut butter style. Oof! I did not care for that at all. I tried a few other ones, and maybe it's just. Um, just not kind of a thing I enjoy, but maybe they're really good. I don't know. Um, and I've had Yellow Belly many, many times over the years, and I've had many, uh, many editions of them, and they've been quite enjoyable. Um, and I think this one also is is quite nice, um, but it's not. I think my taste buds have changed from when I probably it's very enjoyed the uh, Yellow Belly in the past. Need to see here. I now know where we had it. All right, where do we have it? We had it at Himmerigat, 9th of May, two thousand nineteen. Is this for the Copenhagen Pub Crawl Championship? Woof. No, we didn't do a May. It may have been two thousand nineteen. I've only tagged you, so you and mine mm. must have gone to Himmerigat. May 9th. What else would we have been there for? I'm, there may have been some other event that was happening. It's uh, very possible. In May. Because we because we did it in... May seems too early. Yeah, it, it does. Um, May 9th, definitely way too early. It would have been June, July, the first year. Second year was September. And this year was August. So, So if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about... We do a pub crawl championship where we, yeah, yeah, it's it's, a, yeah. it's a, so so on our in our private lives we have a couple of beer drinking events and one is uh, what's called the Copenhagen Pub Crawl Challenge where <laughs> we're uh, we all meet at a central a central location in Copenhagen, uh, create teams of two, assign bars and then everyone goes to their starting point and then pub crawls to a final destination over like a three hour period. And they're given various challenges to uh, to do uh, while while they're going, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. Um, this year was was probably the best year ever. But you have a reference maybe to what I, happened on May 9th. I now know what happened on May 9th, two thousand nineteen, when we had this beer. Oh, was it Swanza? No, no, no Swanza. we it was were in the Blue Bear Cantillon Blue Bar. I would say it would have been Cantillon Blue Bear on that when we had. I think 40 beers yeah. in the queue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you gave this a 5 out of 5. Oh, I was really drunk, probably. Uh, uh, I I actually quite like it today. Mm-hmm. I think the artificial flavors have not been made... They haven't been as exacerbated. Mm-hmm. Is that the right word? Mm-hmm. They haven't been made worse. It's it's quite a, it's mellowed out. It doesn't taste as strong as a thirteen percent ABV anymore. No, it doesn't taste thirteen percent at all. But to be fair, I don't think this beer ever was super boozy. Uh, I will say that um, Omnipolo no. doesn't make super boozy stouts. They make uh, maybe something that tastes like blueberry syrup. Yeah. Uh, quite often, like there was it called amalgam. Which, yeah, right, right. Ugh, I hate that beer so much. Um, anagram. 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 Well, that is one of my least favorite beers. But I think their their beers are never boozy. Um, and I think that uh, this beer is quite, it's, it's still quite good. Um, 
the aftertaste, you do get the peanut butter flavor. Yep. I think that the marzipanness is just the nature of using the peanut butter powder Probably. in the beer itself. And the biscuits. And the biscuits, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to give this, uh, I'm going to say a four. Okay. Uh, I am at a, it's one of my strongest four to fives. It's probably a four five, this one. Actually. I could go to four to five, honestly. Um, I, think it's, I think it's really good. I think uh, this is one where personal preferences really matter a lot on, on the, what you're going to give this. Um, what, what, what but also, you, also, I gave it a five two years ago when yeah, it first yeah. came out. So <laughs> definitely, definitely. And since you've you've seen it at my place and not mm -hmm. really remember that we ticked it in the Blober Q Cantillon Blober Q. Um, to be fair, I don't remember a lot of things no, we ticked on that day. No, no, that's, that's fair enough. I, I thought that it would be fun to bring it mm -hmm. to uh, to our Christmas calendar for m these many reasons. Yeah. I think what increases it to a week week 4.5 is that I expected um, incorrect flavors to have popped out mm. in these three years but they haven't no it's it's held up so nicely I think that comes with with canning as opposed to putting it in a bottle I think um, canning uh, creates a longer shelf life than bottling does. It definitely protects it from uh, dangerous UV lights mm -hmm. from the evil sun. The sun is our enemy. It is, but I also think that it um, preserves the, a lot of the flavors and um, adjunct flavors within the beer itself because there's nowhere for the gases to escape. So even if you put a bottle cap on there, there's still a bit of a gas exchange happening there yes. in a way that uh, cans just just can't do no um no i i completely agree and this wasn't the case 20 years ago when cans were made in a different way they, yeah. they definitely gave off a slightly aluminum flavor yeah metallic flavor to well the they beer. do a plastic coat lining i think these days on cans that keep them uh I think so. You, Keep them from the metal leakage and from rusting and things like that. Yeah. Uh, Cam technology sure has come a long way. <laughs> yeah. What well, was a conversation I did not expect to have today? Um, the, the latest in can technology. Yes, yeah, the latest in can technology. Uh, but yeah, no, this is good. This reminds me of classic, like, Amnipola. I wish they were doing more stuff like this again. Like, yeah. so much of the stuff they do these days is, like... Strange. Just get back to drawing beers, man. Just yeah. kind of... I feel like they should just start over. And then rebuild um, because they used to be just an amazing brewery, and now they're they're not a brewery I really appreciate anymore. No. So, so me dragging this one up, I've been saving it to drink with you for the longest for the time. The longest time. I just couldn't find uh, uh, the opportunity, so I figured with the Christmas calendar, I've got you cord. It's always a good time. You know what? I might reach into my. Uh, limited seller of old L's and pull out something as well. Wow. It'll probably be from uh, Firestone Walker. Uh, it'll probably be a wow. anniversary beer. Who knows? Wow. But anyway, uh, this is that episode. So welcome to day 18. See you tomorrow. Uh, see you tomorrow. Yeah.